on World News Tonight. Climate catastrophe. Countries around the world experience Mother Nature's fury as unending storms cause mass destruction. Ten styles. Russian president has claimed to attend the Beijing Olympics despite boycotts. Pandemic panic. The world scrambles once again as Omicron grows at a rapid pace. Christmas collection. Nana Bobble sets a Guinness World Record for the largest ornamental collection. From the global resources of the Verna Media Network, this is Other Verna World News Tonight. Now reporting from Studio 24 in Colombo, here's Anuradhi Wickramasinghe. Good evening and thank you for joining us on World News Tonight. We start off today's coverage with updates on the Super Typhoon Rai. The devastating typhoon slammed into the eastern coast of the Philippines, bringing torrential rain and the threat of widespread flooding across the archipelago. The storm rapidly intensified and was upgraded from a typhoon to a super typhoon. By the time it made landfall on Siragao Island on the central east coast, it had reached sustained winds of 260 km per hour, with gusts over 300 km per hour equivalent to a Category 5 hurricane in the Atlantic. The country's National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council said around 198,000 people have already evacuated from their homes to government shelters. Many preemptive evacuations and storm preparations began earlier in the week as the country began seeing heavy rain. In central Mizami's oriental province, the Agayayan River overflowed, flooding streets and homes with muddy brown water. The storm is expected to travel to the country's central and southern regions. Some of the worst conditions are expected in Surigao province, which lies on the northern tip of Mindanao, one of the country's major islands. President Joe Biden traveled to Kentucky in the wake of deadly tornadoes and severe storms that devastated the area, announcing the federal government would cover 100% of costs of emergency work for the first 30 days after the extreme weather event. U.S. President Joe Biden walked through the battered remains of two Kentucky cities on Wednesday to get a first-hand view of the destruction wrought by one of the deadliest tornado outbreaks in recent U.S. history. The disaster killed at least 74 people in Kentucky and 14 elsewhere. Don't hesitate to ask for anything. There's no uh, red tornadoes or blue tornadoes. There's no red states or blue states when this stuff starts to happen. Biden walked through Mayfield and Dawson Springs, consoling survivors as he went. The scope and scale of this destruction is almost beyond belief. Kentucky Governor Andy Beshear said federal authorities have been deeply engaged in on-the-ground efforts. Bashir said among those killed were a dozen children, and with more than 100 people still missing, he expects the death toll to rise. FEMA has sent search and rescue and emergency response teams to Kentucky, along with teams to help survivors register for assistance. You will recover and you will rebuild. Mayfield was the hardest hit Kentucky community in the 200-mile path of a twister that turned cities into piles of debris, now being hauled away by work crews and the National Guard. On a further development, the unprecedented storm brought record-breaking rain to California, causing mudslides and forcing evacuations. It's now slamming Colorado with gusts of up to 107 miles per hour, with a new storm threat following close behind. Tonight, new tornadoes whipping across the Midwest. Official warnings stretching to at least five states. Thousands bracing for cover as a massive storm wave pushes through the country bringing this blinding snow plus dangerous winds. The system so powerful, it tossed this trailer right across a highway. Stop! From the West Coast to the Great Plains. A deluge of rain and hurricane force winds, leaving thousands without power. Even trapping drivers, many with no way home. The unprecedented storm first slammed into Southern California on Tuesday. Record-breaking rain quickly turning the L.A. River into raging rapids, swallowing vehicles and prompting swift water rescues. We had a white two-door car here early on, and now there's a T-top also. We have two vehicles stacked up. After months of drought, burn scars transformed overnight into dangerous mudslides, forcing evacuations and stranding those left behind. The storm of the season now battering the Rockies and gaining strength. 
gusts of up to 107 miles per hour crashing into Colorado. 50,000 businesses and homes in the metro Denver area without power. At Denver International Airport, closed runways leading to mounting delays and more than 100 cancellations. And in the Midwest, this dust bowl growing in size. Parts of Oklahoma and Kansas battling high winds and severe weather. Holy With 89 million people under wind alerts across the country, tonight a new threat as a second storm quickly approaches the West. For the second time this year, the leaders of China and Russia held a video conference. During the latest meeting, President Xi Jinping and Vladimir Putin reportedly decided to provide greater bilateral support when discussing the winter games. Russian President Vladimir Putin has promised Chinese President Xi Jinping that he will attend the opening ceremony of the Winter Olympics in Beijing next year. It's an event which many Western leaders, including U.S. President Joe Biden and U.K. Prime Minister Boris Johnson, are boycotting due to human rights abuses in China. Putin added that a new model of cooperation has been formed based on other matters of principles like non-interference in international affairs. The two leaders spoke via video call on Wednesday. Both China and Russia have tense relations with the West at present. China is under pressure over human rights issues, while Moscow has drawn heavy criticism over the massing of Russian troops near the border of Ukraine. The video meeting came more than a week after President Biden spoke to Putin in a video conference to warn of strict sanctions on Russia in case of new military aggression against Ukraine. Putin won support from C for his push to obtain binding security guarantees for Russia from the West. What Russia wants is for the U.S. and NATO to guarantee the military alliance will not expand further eastward. Putin also called Xi his dear friend and said that the relationship between the two sides has reached an unprecedentedly high level. Xi Jinping said that the two countries should discuss the correct meaning of democracy and human rights and serve as the backbone that defends international equity and justice. The video conference came after last week's democracy summit in which 110 countries attended, except for Russia and China. South Africa's High Court ordered former President Jacob Zuma to return to jail after setting aside an earlier decision to release him on medical parole, a court judgment has showed. South Africa's High Court ordered former President Jacob Zuma to return to jail on Wednesday, setting aside an earlier decision to release him on medical parole. The 79-year-old began medical parole in September and is serving a 15-month sentence for contempt of court after he ignored instructions to participate in a corruption inquiry. In the same month, South Africa's top court dismissed a bid by Zuma to overturn the sentence. Ulrich Rue is a South African lawyer. Any person um, is capable of or able to uh, apply for medical parole. But the requirements to be released on medical parole must be met. And if I can just read this one sentence from the judgment, um, the Medical Parole Review Board found that Jacob Zuma is not suffering from a terminal disease or condition. Zuma is facing charges of alleged corruption during his nine-year reign. It's widely viewed as a test of post-apartheid South Africa's ability to enforce the rule of law, particularly against powerful, well-connected people. Zuma handed himself in on July 7th to begin his prison sentence. That triggered the worst violence South Africa had seen in years as his angry supporters took to the streets. The protests widened into looting and an outpouring of anger over the hardship and inequality in South Africa. More than 300 people were killed and thousands of businesses were pillaged and razed. Zuma's legal team are appealing the latest court ruling, as is the country's prison department. He denies wrongdoing in all cases and says he is the victim of a political witch hunt meant to marginalise his faction within the ruling African National Congress. Let's go in for a short commercial break. More world news on the other side.
Welcome back. Now on to the updates of the COVID pandemic. A growing number of US colleges and universities move final exams online. Apple shut down some of its stores temporarily and major North American sports leagues scramble to control outbreaks as cases climb and the threat from the new Omicron coronavirus variant grows worldwide. Several universities were forced to move final exams online. Apple shut down some of its stores temporarily, and long lines formed at many testing clinics in New York City. Scenes reminiscent of the early days of the pandemic as the threat of a new wave of COVID-19 brought renewed disruption. A jump in positive tests has also left three major North American sports leagues scrambling to control outbreaks. While the Delta variant remains responsible for the vast majority of U.S. cases, Omicron has turned up in at least 36 states and the numbers are growing fast. U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention Director Rochelle Walensky. We expect to see the proportion of Omicron cases here in the United States continue to grow in the coming weeks. Early data suggests that Omicron is more transmissible than Delta with a doubling time of about two days. While much is still not known about the new variant, White House officials said the country would not go back into lockdown and grade schools would remain open, saying existing protocols like indoor masking and boosters put the country in a much better position than a year ago. Health officials elsewhere were striking a more dire tone. In the UK, which hit its highest number of daily cases at any time during the pandemic, Chief Medical Officer Chris Whitty said Omicron was a serious threat. It is moving at an absolutely phenomenal pace. And in Canada, top health officials advised against international travel. We know that this may sound very drastic to many listening, but we must avoid overloading our hospital system and our healthcare workers. Boosters reconstitute the antibody titers and enhance the vaccine protection against Omicron. One positive development, Dr. Anthony Fauci Wednesday said booster doses of the currently available COVID-19 vaccines work against Omicron, and there appears to be no need for a variant-specific booster. Though without the booster, all three U.S. authorized COVID-19 vaccines appear to be significantly less protective against Omicron in laboratory testing than against previous variants. Several European nations started vaccinating children aged 5 to 11 against COVID-19 in an effort to contain a raging pandemic and keep schools open. In France, vaccination has only been approved for 5 to 11-year-olds at risk of developing serious illnesses. But the government has said it's considering extending it to all children on a voluntary basis. From Wednesday, 360,000 children aged 5 to 11 are now able to get their first doses in France. This includes children suffering from underlying conditions such as heart problems, breathing issues, severe asthma, diabetes or obesity. Children under 12 living with vulnerable people or those with weakened immune systems are also eligible. They'll receive the Pfizer vaccine but a lower dosage than adults. Instead of injecting the 30 micrograms given to adults, 10 micrograms would be enough for children. France has already ordered 2 million extra doses this month, with another 1 million vaccines being delivered in January. The government is expected to open vaccination to all children on a voluntary basis, but is waiting for the recommendation of the health authorities. The idea was put forward in November after receiving approval from Europe's medicines regulator. Vaccination for under-12s has now opened in Greece, Hungary and Spain on Wednesday. In Germany, some doctors started administering their first injections from Tuesday. Nations around the world were easing COVID-19 restrictions, but that is no longer the case, with the new variant and infections rising. The uncertainty surrounding another wave, plus renewed curbs, are taking their toll on mental health. With strict virus curbs being reimposed around the world, it's hard to believe that just last month, several countries had been easing prevention measures. The Omicron variant and COVID-19's global resurgence have, for now, erased all hopes of a gradual return to normal. And it's coming at the expense of global mental health. Pointing out the frustration people are feeling over two years of, quote, zigzagging policy and false dawns, the New York Times reported on Monday U.S. local time that people's resilience has dwindled. Director General of Rome-based research group Census 
Massimiliano Valeri says the social ladder on which people could improve their position in life has been blocked by the pandemic, worsening public anxiety over the future. According to the head of Italy's national psychologist body, David Lazari, recent studies in the country showed cases of anxiety and depression had doubled since the pandemic began. The same is being reported in France as well, where an epidemiologist has also observed a spread of anorexia and bulimia among adolescents and young adults short of actual human contact. Over in Russia, therapists have reported conspiracy theories among patients, obsessive behavior, and a strong increase in a public mistrust of vaccines. Mental health experts in South Korea believe the sense of endlessness is adding to the dissatisfaction. Experts warn that if there isn't a way for people to experience happiness, even amid a prolonged pandemic, simply requiring the public to wait until the virus subsides will lead to a mental health disaster. German police have foiled a plot by anti-vaccination activists to murder the state premier of Saxony in eastern Germany as concerns grow over an increasingly violent pushback against COVID-19 vaccination plans. German police said on Wednesday they had foiled a murder plot by anti-vaccination activists in the state of Saxony. The target, the eastern German state's premier, Michael Kretschmer. Five suspects have been arrested and are under investigation. Protests against new restrictions on the unvaccinated and plans to make vaccinations compulsory for some groups in Germany have recently become more violent, with increased attacks on doctors, politicians and journalists. The plot to kill Kretschmer had been discussed on Telegram by a group called Dresden Offline Vernetzung or Dresden Offline Network. The state of Saxony, which has one of the highest rates of COVID-19 in Germany, as well as the lowest rates of vaccination, is no stranger to threats from anti-vaxxers. In September, a vaccination centre was the target of an arson attack. And in November, protesters holding lit torches gathered outside the home of the state's interior minister. Germany's new chancellor, Olaf Scholz, has said his government will not tolerate violent protests against coronavirus restrictions. Vaccinations will become mandatory in Germany from March next year for people working in medical practices, including hospitals and nursing homes. Welcome back. For more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. A number of UN Security Council members are calling for a public meeting on North Korea's human rights issues. Speaking on behalf of council members, including Britain and France, US Ambassador Linda Thomas-Greenfield said the regime's human rights violations must be prioritized. The European Medicines Agency has approved Johnson & Johnson's COVID-19 vaccine to be used as a booster shot. It says the J&J vaccine may be given to adults at least two months after the initial shot was administered. The US and the UK have voiced support for Ukraine during the debate at the UN Human Rights Council. The session convened to address Ukraine but quickly drifted into criticism of Russia's military buildup along Ukraine's border. Seven-time Formula One world champion Lewis Hamilton was made a Knight Bachelor by Britain's Prince Charles during an investiture ceremony at Windsor Castle in England. The honour came days after Hamilton lost this year's championship title to Max Verstappen. Four children were killed and several more badly injured in Australia after strong winds lifted an inflated jumping castle into the air during the end of year school celebrations, causing them to fall 10 metres. Thousands marched in New Zealand's capital, Wellington, to protest against COVID-19 vaccine mandates and lockdowns as the country reached 90% fully vaccinated milestone. Australian airline Qantas has announced that it will switch its domestic fleet of planes to Airbus from Boeing. The deal is a major win for the European plane maker and a blow to its US-based arse rival. Australia's Qantas Airways announced Thursday it's switching from Boeing to Airbus as its preferred supplier in a major win for the European plane maker. The airline said deliveries would start in mid-2023 and continue over the next decade. 
replacing an aging domestic fleet of Boeing planes with more eco-friendly aircraft. The announcement caps a successful week for Airbus, which also locked in an order with Singapore Airlines and looks set to finalize another with Dutch airline KLM. Losing Qantas deals a big blow to Boeing's 737 MAX, interrupting a strong sales run since the jet was cleared for flight late last year following a safety ban. Boeing, which will only continue to supply its 787 Dreamliners, said it was disappointed in Qantas' decision, but that it looked forward to continuing its decades-long partnership with the airline. Meanwhile, Airbus said it was honored by Qantas' selection. In a statement, Qantas CEO Alan Joyce said he was not concerned that the airline would grow overly reliant on Airbus, weakening its ability to play the manufacturers against each other for better pricing going forward. And finally tonight, a Welsh woman known as Nana Bobbles has broken a world record for her collection of nearly 1,800 Christmas ornaments, while another Brit has taken the title for the largest festive brooch collection. Guinness World Records announced that two Christmas World Record titles were broken by Sylvia Pope from Swansea and Adam White, originally from Hastings and now living in Berlin. Clinching the global authority on record-breaking title for largest collection of Christmas bauble ornaments as of December 1st, Pope has collected 1,760 Christmas bauble ornaments. She said her haul is always continuing to grow. Wherever she goes anywhere and sees a bauble, she likes to fetch it home, especially during the Christmas time. Wyatt's brooch collection amounted to 7,929 as of December 2nd. He said there was no one reason why he started collecting the Christmas accessory. In case you have missed any of the stories we aired tonight, you can rewatch by catching us on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash English. And that's all the news we have for you tonight. Suzanne Chanal will join you again tomorrow with another edition of World News. I'm Anradi Vikramasinghe. Until then, stay safe and have a great night.